hero wars or a pair of nine foot wars for modders to get up and over as a team or on your own. To help a teammate get up and over the wall, lean against the wall in a sitting position. Your teammate can then climb on your knee, then your shoulder to get up and over the wall. Helping your fellow mother this way can have serious consequences for your back. Be careful. The second wall sometimes has an overhanging ledge. This is commonly referred to as an Irish table. You still help your fellow mother in the same way. However, it is a little bit more awkward for them to get up and over. And here's Becky Neal showing us how it's done. Crybaby is a crawling obstacle. There's no need for strength, dexterity or skill to get through this one, but it certainly preys on people's fear of the dark in enclosed spaces. As mudders crawl through the space, they may encounter some objects such as nets, maybe some disco lights, maybe some things getting in the way, but they will always come across some tear gas. But don't worry, it's not true tear gas, it's actually menthol crystals. Think Vicks Vapor Rub. Great to clear your sinuses, but will definitely bring a tear to your eyes. Everest is another iconic tough mudder obstacle. A quarter pipe ramp where mudders run up to try and get up and over the top, either solo or as a team. If you're working as a team at the top, ideally you have three people. Two people to hold the mudder, whilst the third one will help grab the leg of the mudder to get them up onto the obstacle. If you're the mother trying to get up, the best thing to do is grab hold of people's hands and then try and get your leg up for another mother to help pull you up. So you've got three points of contact to help you up onto the obstacle. Everest can be conquered solo and my best tip is to really start your sprint when you hit the bottom of the ramp. If you do it too early, you're going to run out of gas before you get to the top. Kiss of Mud is a tough mudder staple. Essentially, it's a long crawl, usually through mud and usually under barbed wire. Depending on the venue, the obstacle can be longer, shorter, uphill, downhill, muddier, drier, sometimes with water bits. Not really any tips to get through this, just get low, make sure you don't get snagged up on the barbed wire, uh, get muddy. Electric Eel is a deliciously evil Tough Mudder obstacle. Mudders crawl through a shallow water pit which is about 10 to 15 metres long. However, there's lots of dangling electric wires that are there to shock mudders if they get entangled in them. If you take it nice and easy, you should be able to navigate through the gaps in the wires without getting shocked. However, do beware there are two long poles within the water pit in which Tough Mudder is determined to zap you. Walk This Way is a pure tough mudder obstacle. It is all about teamwork. No strength involved, there's no strategy involved, but it's all about teamwork and communication. 
get it wrong and you're going nowhere. But if you get it right and also know the difference between your right and your left, actually you can get moving pretty quickly. Everyone wants to take long marching steps and this is wrong. Actually, the best way to go is like these guys, left, right, left, right, left, right. Block Ness is the iconic Tough Mudder obstacle and it is my favourite. Fun fact, when it debuted at World's Toughest Mudder in Vegas, it was actually called Roll the Dice. It is a quintessential Tough Mudder obstacle as it needs teams and teamwork to get everybody up and over the two blocks. The pit of water is around 5 foot or 1.5 meters deep, so if you're quite short, you're probably just going to be a passenger on this obstacle. In this footage, teams need to be rolling the block anti-clockwise. One or two mudders go over the top at a time, and when they're on the other side they need to jump up, grab the top of the block to keep it rolling. Tough Mudder have turned a simple cargo neck core, which is Devil's Beard, into sometimes what is the bane of Legionnaire's life. Tough Mudder like to change this up a little bit, so sometimes it's longer, shorter, uphill, downhill, around corners, and sometimes with weights on top of the net, just to make it a little bit more difficult. Here are a few tips to make Devil's Beard a little bit easier. As a team, go side by side and draft behind each other. Hold the net up for your fellow mudders. Keep your head down so the net goes over your neck and over your back rather than your head. And depending on the net, it's also easier to go backwards, letting the net hit your ass first. Funky Monkey is one of my favourite Tough Mudder obstacles. It's made up of a set of monkey bars, transitioning into spinning wheels, over to a bar, to the finish. The number one tip I can give you is when you grab onto the horizontal bar, grab towards yourself. When you spin round, you'll be facing the next wheel, unlike this guy who's facing away. Steady yourself and grab on tight because it gives you a big kick. Grab onto the last parallel bar to make sure you get to the finish. And even if you want to go for a refreshing dip, who are we to stop you? This is Twinkle Toes, a relatively straightforward Tough Mudder obstacle in which you basically climb a balance beam run along the balance beam and then get off it. It's really not technical, neither does it really need any strength, but you need to be able to balance really well, in which I think a lot of us have lost the ability to balance. The best tip I can give is to really attack the start. If you're really slow, you actually lose balance before you get on there. And also, don't forget, it's Tough Mudder. You can always get a friend to help you. It's all about teamwork. Arctic Enema is an iconic Tough Mudder obstacle. This is footage of the European version, which is far superior to the American version of Arctic Enema. Mudders slide down a tube into a pit of iced cold water. The temperature is around about 3 to 5 degrees centigrade. But that's not it. You have to duck under the tyres for a full submersion to get to the other side. Mudmile is a tough mudder icon. A really simple to put together obstacle 
which is basically mud pits and mud piles. This footage is from Tough Mudder Northwest, notoriously the muddiest course on the calendar. You may need to help your fellow mudders by pulling them up and over the ridges or pushing them over too. You may also be able to follow through the divots and the ditches that people have been able to carve through before you. This is also where using trail shoes rather than running shoes will have a massive, massive difference on how you get on over this obstacle. Just a Tip is a grip strength obstacle from Tough Mudder. Unlike many other Tough Mudder obstacles, this one is designed to be done solo, although there are ways of being able to get across this as a team. In the European version of Just a Tip, participants go from ledge to doorknobs, back to ledge to finish the obstacle. There is space to allow your fingers behind the ledge to give you some grip. Whilst the doorknobs can be extremely slippy, especially when wet, When getting to the doorknob section, get your lead hand to reach out for the second doorknob, allowing space for your following hand to hit the first doorknob. Hydrophobia is a wonderfully simple obstacle. You're in a pit of water around about 40 to 50 centimetres deep, and you basically have to go under two large air baffles. Wonderfully refreshing in those summer days, but can be awfully cold on those really cold mornings. This is Hanging Tough, a rig that usually transitions from rings to bar to rings. And here are three very quick tips to help you conquer Hanging Tough. Number one, when grabbing for the bar with your lead hand, leave enough room for your following hand to grab onto the bar too. Number two, if the rings are wet or slippery, grab on with both hands to give yourself a little bit more grip and support. And finally, the bar to the ring is sometimes a little bit further than what you expect. Give yourself a little bit more momentum on the bar so you can reach out for that final transition to the ring. This is Pyramid Scheme, a true Tough Mudder obstacle in where it takes a team to get up and over the obstacle. You need four teammates to be able to do this properly and then everyone else can just use the four people to get up and over the obstacle. Two of your strongest teammates need to be at the bottom to build the base of your pyramid. They need to be strong because they're holding at least two other people to get up and over the pyramid scheme. You then have a tall person as your second layer and then your fourth person should be at the top relatively strong to help pull people up and over the top of pyramid scheme. Once everyone else is up you then get the second layer to be pulled up by the fourth and all the rest of the teammates. He then dangles down with his legs down so you can get the first layer up. One of them pulls the other one up and then uses the legs of the second layer to pull themselves up. That layer plus the third layer then should also dangle down to help get the last person up and over pyramid scheme. This is Cage Core, a water pit around half a meter deep with a fence over the top 
giving mud is only around a 10 centimeter gap between the water and the fence, giving the mud a deep sense of claustrophobia. The best way to take on this obstacle is to relax in the water. The more tense you are, the more likely you are to splash and either swallow water or get it in your eyes, making you panic. Sometimes you may see mop heads dangling down and it's best to head between them as the watery threads would definitely give you a weird feeling as you go underneath them. If you do start to panic, don't worry, there are gaps in the fence where you can sit up and take a breather or the whole fence mechanism can be lifted up. Remember, cage crawl is best done relaxed and slowly. Enjoy the relaxation and just imagine you're having a great time at the spa. Mudder horn is one of the final obstacles that you'll face on a tough mudder course. Standing at around 30 feet tall, it's certainly one for the mudders to face their fear of heights. But first, it takes a team to actually get onto the structure. To help your fellow mudder get on the structure, lean against the wall, bend your knees and the mudder can climb on your knees, on your shoulder and get to the top. If you're already on the structure, you can give your fellow mudder a hand just to help pull them up a bit. If you're feeling adventurous, you can always give a run and jump, pull yourself to the top. It's then just a case of climbing your way to the top. Netting's quite tight, so you should be able to use it a bit like a ladder. When you're at the top, take a moment to take in the views. The traditional way to go down is to face into the structure and descend as though you're going down a ladder. Personally, I prefer to walk down facing out. Electroshock therapy is the finishing obstacle at Tough Mudder. A field of wires dangling from a rectangular frame, clicking as 10,000 volts crackle through them. It's up to the mudder to try and get through as best they can with or without getting electroshocked. Some choose just to run straight through. Personally, I like to take my time. I pick my gaps through the wires and walk through. Unfortunately, there is no tips that I can give you for electroshock therapy. Just go in knowing that you're going to be shocked because you are going to get shocked. But it's not that bad. Not really. <laughs> 